Is this stage select theme driving you insane yet? Hey guys, Saxdude26 here, and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man 1 on the Wily Wars. In the previous part, we defeated three more robot masters, and now we have just one left. So, what does fire ignite? You guessed it, bombs. It's time to take on my personal favorite of the original six robot masters, Bomb Man. Yes, I intentionally saved him for last. I'm not quite sure what it is I like most about Bomb Man, or why I particularly like him over all the others, but I just do. He's a fairly underrated robot master, and I don't quite understand why. I mean, his stage can be frustrating at times, and his weapon isn't all that brilliant, but I like the look of his stage. It's a fairly fun challenge, and the whole round building lollipop sci-fi Jetsons thing you've got going in the background is kind of cool. Also, I, I like his stage theme, and the boss fight with him is pretty fun as well. So yeah, Bomb Man is my favorite robot master. Also, here's Flame Man's, uh, Flame Man? Fire Man's weapon, which we got last part, the Firestorm. You shoot forward a fire blast, and a flame shield circles around you, both of which can be used to hit enemies. It's fairly powerful and has probably an equal number of applications to the Thunder Beam because of its extended range. Oh boy, dodging four beaks at once, this is painful. Get rid of you before you make my life a living poop. Wow, these beaks are being more problematic than they should be. <laughs> okay. Ugh, ugh, spikes. Yeah, Bomb Man's stage is filled with bottomless pits and spikes. In case you haven't worked out yet, as is the case with a lot of video game characters, spikes are instant death for Mega Man. He's very squishy to spikes, despite being a robot. Practically like a Stanley knife cutting straight through him. Anywho, here is Sniper Joe. Well, there was Sniper Joe, a rather annoying enemy of Mega Man 1, mainly because there's no discernible pattern to the way he attacks. He jumps all over the place, and then he'll choose to stop guarding to shoot at you whenever he feels like it. Sometimes in shots of three, sometimes in shots of, shots of one. There's no real pattern for it in Mega Man 1, so... Timing your shots right is a bit problematic. He's a lot easier to hit when you jump, though, so that's good. Also, forgot to mention, killer bullets in the actual bomb stage. A little more fitting than in Fireman stage. Well, uh, there we go. I'm gonna get spiked. The last screen before the boss hallway. And flying shells. Uh, this is not going to end well. I need to try not to spike myself. There we go. Much better. I swear, flying shells just look like floating hamburgers, and I don't understand why. There we go, now I can demonstrate a little bit better that Sniper Jews, while they have their shield up when they jump, really cannot dodge in the air very well. Unlike a certain other creation of Dr. Light who comes to mind, who we'll get along to meeting later on, not in this game. Spoilers. Um, but yes, just one more thing standing in the way of the boss hallway, and that is another Sniper Joe. Fantastic. I swear I'm so glad you guys got nerfed in terms of your randomness in the later games, because honestly, if you stayed this random in games like Mega Man 7, you would be so frustrating. Especially if you were in Mega Man 2 doing that as well, that would be really annoying. Because you're all over the place in that game. Come on. Go up right, please. Lovely. And what do we get for a score ball? Of course. Now then. Down we go. We. E. That is so much fun. Just flying past all those octopus batteries. Now. Bomb man. Word of caution, he's, if you've played the NES version, he's far more aggressive in this one than he is in that. Instead of trying to jump away from you, he'll try and jump towards you, practically on your face. And that can get a bit annoying at times, because he's practically jump kicking you all over the shop. Also, don't run into the hyperbomb like me. That's kind of dumb, because the explosion still hits you until it completes. 
but I can understand why a lot of people take him on first, because like Cutman and Gutsman, he takes a fair amount of damage from the Mega Buster. Probably the most out of those three. Nevertheless, favorite Robot Master is down, favorite stage is down. Though I mainly saved it for last, because as good as the stage is, the weapon is a little unwieldy, honestly. I don't really have many uses for it except for beating Gutsman in the rematch. But now, we've beaten all six Robot Masters. So it's time to take on Big Bad Dr. Wowie himself. Ooh, big... Fairly big score bonus there. Pity it doesn't actually amount to anything. And Wily has a flying saucer! Why for Wily have a UFO? I don't quite understand that. Why for he wiggle his eyebrows? I don't understand that either. But he's a mad scientist, he can do what he likes. And now we enter Castle Wily, the final fortress. And it's here where I'm gonna start using Robot Master weapons a whole lot more. Not just for the rematches, but just in the general stages themselves, because they make the stages far less annoying. I forgot to mention, as well as flaming fu as well as freezing fire bars, there, the ice slasher can also freeze enemies, and that makes this opening section here with the three big guys far more bearable. I break out the super arm here. Not sure why Mega Man was doing the chicken dance there, okay. Yet another game I can make the main character do that in. Why do I keep doing that and making people do the chicken dance? I did it to Spyro, I know I can do it to Cloud in Final Fantasy VII, and now I can do it to Mega Man, interesting. Break out the Thunder Beam here to deal with these upcoming fleas. Am I shooting the right way? Good. Lovely. Oh, that was a good shot. Excellent, okay. Now, in addition to just being a general Thunder Beam, Thunder Beam can also destroy Guts Blocks. And when it destroys them, the Shrapnel also counts as if you'd use the Super Arm, so it can actually hit enemies, which is quite nice. Why am I still using the Thunder Beam? Buster. I don't have to use the Thunder Beam if I don't need to. Now this screen. Break out the Magnet Beam. No thank you, Footholders. I'm not going to... Ah. Thank goodness for invincibility frames, or I would have been spiked very badly there. I'm just gonna magnet beam my way over this chasm here. Refill onto magnet beam, and then do this. This screen requires magnet beam. If you did not get it from a left man stage, you are not going to get through Wily Castle. So, best you grab it before you come here. In the previous screen, if you're playing the NES version, the weapon energy does respawn because everything respawns in this game in the NES version, but since they fixed that in Wily Wars, you've only got one shot, so make it count. Alrighty, time for the most infamous boss, yes, more so than Elect Man. It's the Yellow Devil. If I can beat him on my first try, I will be very happy, because I hate this boss. The Yellow Devil is basically human Tetris in boss form. He does a lot of damage, equal to the amount of damage you can do to him, and the Thunder Beam is his weakness. Make sure every hit counts, because if he kills you twice, near near death, you've wasted all of your energy on it and will need to use something else like the Mega Buster. And I'm pretty sure not even the Firestorm does as much damage as the Thunder Beam does. There is a pause glitch, ow in the NES version, which a lot of people abuse to beat the Yellow Devil, because basically you could pause with the Start button, or you could pause with the Select button, and if you use the Select button, that would pause the entire game without opening the menu. It would also re reset all collisions with weapons and enemies, which meant if you, did, if you paused like that, when an enemy was getting hit by a weapon like the Thunder Beam, and then unpaused again, the hit would count twice, and three times, and four times, and so on and so forth so long as it was still touching them. And as such, that's a- Ooh, I got killed by Yellow Devil! So yeah, as such, that was a very handy strategy to beat the Yellow Devil with. Granted, it's not in Wily Wars, so I have to do this legitimately. Let's try that again with full health and half the Thunder Beam energy. Hopefully I don't waste it too much. Treat it like Human Tetris of Doom, and if you get hit too much, you're going to die. Literally. 
Ow. I am butchering this up royally. Thunderbeam! That way! Oh, Well done. Go! Sorry if my commentary is all over the place and or non-existent. Yellow Devil is just the most nerve-wracking boss in the whole game. Gotcha! Yellow Devil is down! Oh, good golly. That was painful. Alrighty. Now, the Wily stages do not return you back to the saves, the, um, the save screen or the stage select, so I'm thinking I might cut it here for this episode. That was ugh, rather nerve-wracking. I need to... Let myself stop tingling before I tackle this stage, because it's equally hectic. So, that'll be it for this part of Let's Play Mega Man 1 on the Wily Wars. This has been Saxu26, and I'll see you next time for more of Wily Castle.